Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, you know, the heavyweight division is back. Now, that's not to say that Vladimir Klitschko and Vitaly Klitschko weren't future Hall of Famers. Right? It's not to say that we didn't have big fights in the heavyweight division or that the heavyweight division didn't have an occasional colorful person. Right? I personally appreciated David Hayes' uh, persona back in the day. Right? But really, the heavyweight division for years has almost felt like being in a library. Right? Couldn't even get too excited. There wasn't trash talk. Too many corporations running the sport of boxing. Right? Too many image consultants telling guys what to say, what not to say. Right? This was a division back in the day where, you know, Lennox Lewis and Haseem Rockman got into it on the set of a TV show. Right? Where Ali and Joe Fraser got into it on the set of a TV show. Where Mike Tyson and Lennox Lewis got into it at a press conference. Right? This is a division where there have been heavyweights who've just refused to talk much to the press. Right? Sonny Liston. But yet, you know, he was in Vegas. He was all around. People understood this guy was a character. Right? Well, let's just say now that Vladimir Klitschko is lost, now that the powers that be have splintered the crown, right? It seems everyone has a heavyweight title these days. Right now that you know a lot's happened, I'll just say I hope you're following the trash talk because it is outstanding. Right, outstanding. Now first, let's talk about the level of the trash talk. Let's get inside the psyche of fighters. Right, what is the worst thing you could say to a fighter? Right? The absolute worst thing that you could possibly say to a fighter. You know, I don't believe it's calling a fighter a bum or a stiff. You know, I once saw a press conference where Mike Tyson basically told Evander Holyfield, Hey, you can't fight. You're a bum. You're a stiff. And Evander looked at him and Evander said, Well, we're going to fight anyway. <laughs> you know? Go ahead and prove it to me in the ring. It actually startled Mike Tyson, right? Nor are fighters really thrown when they're accused of taking a fight for the money. You know what? Fighters will often tell fans, hey, I don't want to fight this guy because there's no money in the fight, right? This guy can't draw flies, right? That's what fighters say about Timothy Bradley, for example. That's what fighters used to say about Cal Brook. Right? You're not going to hurt a fighter's feelings by pointing out to the fighter that he's a prize fighter, that money matters, that we're actually talking about his career and financial decisions are part of the game. Right? You're not even going to throw fighters if you accuse them of using steroids. Right? Because these days a fighter will turn and say, hey, well, if you believe I'm juicing, why didn't your manager negotiate drug testing? Right? You know, also, you know, if someone's talking about steroid use and there's a drug testing protocol for the fight, that's not the kind of trash talk that's really going to gain a lot of traction. No, in, in my opinion, in my opinion, the absolute worst thing you could say to a fighter the worst is to accuse the fighter after he's, especially if he's the champ, after he's been knocked down in a fight, right? It's to accuse the fighter of deliberately staying on the canvas because he didn't want to continue getting roughed up by his opponent, right? Nothing is worse than accusing a fighter of staying down on the canvas and losing his title voluntarily rather than get up and continue to get his butt kicked. 
right? I'm just telling you, different generation. That Buster Douglas, Evander Holyfield fight. I'm telling you, it was years. I mean, years before people started remembering Douglas fondly again, right? If you recall that one, Douglas hits the canvas, then he seems to wipe his nose or something while he's on the canvas. Then, of course, he doesn't leave the canvas and he loses his title, right? That's the absolute worst thing you could say about a fighter. In fact, let me give you a variation of it. Mike Tyson was watching one of his boyhood heroes in a fight. Not Ray Leonard, the other guy, Roberto Duran. It's the rematch. Right? Suddenly, Roberto Duran says, no mas. I hope the press talks to Tyson about that fight. Because the interview I saw where Tyson discussed the fight, Tyson got emotional. He couldn't believe it. His idol, Roberto Duran, quitting in a fight? You gotta be kidding. You know, when something like that happens, you almost hope you're gonna hear that the guy had a lacerated spleen or something. That there's some there's some illness that doesn't look obvious while you're watching the fight, but that's devastating. Right? Guy has a ruptured aorta or something, internal bleeding or or something. Right? Because the worst thing you can call a fighter is a quitter. That's the worst. Right? Well, let me say this. Deontay Wilder, and if you don't know about this, please Google it. Deontay Wilder right now is setting up a possible huge grudge match. Right? I'm telling you, the money's going to flow back into the heavyweight division. We saw the Manny Pacquiao-Timothy Bradley fight. Had a problem drawing a crowd. Right? According to reports, that fight didn't break either. Right? That fight's not going to get to, according to reports, 500,000 pay-per-view. I'm telling you, the heavyweights, there was a time where all Mike Tyson had to do was announce a fight, and you knew it was well over a million pay-per-view. Right? Look at the numbers for Tyson Lennox Lewis. Well, Deontay Wilder is accusing Charles Martin, a fellow American, of giving up the heavyweight title on the canvas. Right? Wilder feels that Martin could have gotten up. But that young lion, Anthony Joshua, was just too much for him. So, after having worked his entire career to get the title, <laughs> Martin, according to Wilder, embarrassed the United States. Embarrassed himself by deciding to give up the title while on the canvas. Right? I'm just telling you now. I, I don't expect Wilder to beat Prevetkin. I don't. I'm rolling with Prevetkin in that fight. I'll hedge to play with Wilder by KO. But you could imagine. You could just imagine the theater we'll get if Wilder beats Povetkin and Charles Martin starts following Wilder around like Shannon Briggs has been following everyone around. Right? Oh, man. I mean, honestly. It's like accusing a guy a voluntarily staying on the canvas and giving up his title, I don't think there is any other thing that Wilder could have said that would be more offensive. I'm here cringing at the thought of the accusation. Well, understand, Wilder, who really is a great trash talker, right? As he stays on the public stage and people get to know him more, Folks will catch up to the trash talk. But understand, this is good trash talk. Really good trash talk. You have good trash talk coming from an unlikely source. Anthony Joshua. Now the other great trash talker in the heavyweight division, other than Wilder, is Tyson Fury. Well, Tyson Fury's gained a few pounds. 
right? He has a serious fight coming up against Vladimir Klitschko, right? People understand he's not ducking anybody. He's taking on a real challenger, the guy he beat to get the heavyweight title, right? Well, Joshua, of course, is commenting on Tyson Fury's weight. Now, this criticism isn't the same level as Deontay Wilder's criticism, right? Deontay Wilder's criticism is such that, you know, Anthony, you know, that Charles Martin could just say, hey, are you going to fight me or not? And Wilder's going to have to give him the fight, right? Because he's called him out on that level. But Joshua has basically volunteered to help Tyson Fury lose weight, to help him get rid of the flab. Now, I'll just say this. You want another blockbuster fight. If Tyson Fury successfully defends his title against Vladimir Klitschko, you have an excellent dust-up for supremacy in the UK between Anthony Joshua, unbeaten, and champion Tyson Fury, unbeaten. In fact, quite frankly, that would be a title unification match. Right? So, as someone who believes that, look, there's the heavyweight division, and then there's everyone else. As someone who believes that the only other position in sports on par with heavyweight champion is the world's fastest man, right? This is exciting, right? Big time. Now, I'll say this, though, right? As you're celebrating... The idea of leaving the library. Just understand, I myself believe Povetkin beats Wilder, <laughs> right? Vladimir Klitschko, the odds are close for his fight against Tyson Fury. His brother, former heavyweight champion Vitaly Klitschko, claims that Vladimir has learned his lesson and is coming back stronger than ever. So... Let's enjoy this period of time outside of the library where heavyweight champs are actually talking smack. Right? Let's not take it for granted. Right? Let's enjoy it while it lasts. Because this is boxing. And it may not last for long. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me say this too. You know, this is not to diminish in any way the other weight classes. And certainly you've had charismatic guys in the other weight classes, no question about it. Right? But all I'm saying is there was a time when the world stopped for a big heavyweight title fight. You remember Tyson Lennox Lewis, right? All eyes were on those guys. I don't think too many people watch that fight thinking that was going the distance, right? You understood the winner of that fight was going to rule the jungle, right? In my opinion, watching a fight between two very skilled light welterweights doesn't quite conjure up the same level of excitement, right? I believe you have to go back to probably what? Let Leonard Hagler to really have a fight deliver on the hype, on the promise, right? I know Mayweather Pacquiao did better at the box office. How many of us were talking about that fight and remembering rounds after it happened, right? With the heavyweights, these guys can fall out of bed and guys are going to hit the canvas, right? I mean, you know... I barely know that Deontay Wilder could go the distance, right? Because of that remains deferred fight. I still don't know if Anthony Joshua could go the distance, right? That's how hard-hitting the heavyweight division is, right? If you have a punch and if you have the right attitude and if you can land it, you could be champion, right? Without ever having touched the 10th round. Right, so let's let's enjoy this moment. It's a golden age here of trash talking and fresh air. Let's see what happens. Just don't take any of this for granted. 
thanks for stopping by.